If you ask me to name the three best looking motorcycles in the world, then the Kawasaki Z1000 would definitely be one of them. The bike looks like it landed directly from an alien aircraft to take control of our planet's roads. The fit and finish can rival any luxury car or sport bike on this planet. The paint looks like liquid metal and the headlight is a full LED projector unit. The threat and intimidation is very clear. But once you get on the saddle, it's completely different. The seating posture is extremely comfortable. The upper body is leaned slightly and not in the aggressive way of the ZX-10R and yet it's sportier than the Z800. The seat is triangulated and the front is leaner so you can wrap your legs easily around the tank. As soon as you're on the bike, you feel integrated. It becomes a part of you. On the move, the first thing I realize is how light the bike feels. This is definitely a lot lighter than the Z800 I rode last week. The torque is amazing. It can put some cruisers to shame. The console is way low down and it's almost out of my field of view. The GoPro camera might be able to capture it being a wide angle camera but I'm not being able to see the speedometer and it's actually like riding the wind. There is nothing in my field of view apart from the beautiful rear view mirrors. So I'm on the highway and the motorcycle feels very easy to ride. I mean I was expecting to be intimidated by a leader class bike. You keep your eyes peeled on the road for the next part. The power is available right from the word go. This is not a spec sheet kind of power that is only available in the higher RPMs. The power is there in the low and mid range, being true to the naked bike character. The power delivery is extremely smooth, there is no jerk, it almost makes you feel you're going slow but then again the environment under you starts to blur and you realize the speed. This bike is just plain simple awesome, I mean it's just two minutes that, that I've ridden this but it's just too awesome. I didn't get much lean angle but the bike felt extremely stable in that small corner I faced and the wide rear tire has so much traction that you feel as if you haven't even leaned the bike over and this agility is just like a plaything. I mean you can do whatever you want with this bike it really doesn't feel that it's a big bike it has got the agility of a much smaller motorcycle which is very very impressive and I just want to enjoy this ride Uh oh, big trouble! That was some scary shit right there. The rear wheel lifted up making the entire bike roll on the front wheel. My first stop on a superbike and it's just training and reflexes at work there. That was not intentional. When a bike looks this good, you end up thinking in the back of your mind that the ride may not be able to match up to the looks. But after round one, I can say it rides better than what it looks like. And that is a huge compliment for a bike which looks absolutely stunning. So who's ready for round two? This being a naked bike, people will obviously worry about the wind blast. But I'm amazed at how little wind blast I really feel. Somehow, through that crouched up profiling, Kawasaki has managed to regulate the flow of air to the rider. And there are some sick looking aftermarket solutions to reduce the wind blast up further if you're interested in touring with this bike. Or maybe it's just my Dainese race suit that is making me feel so little of the wind blast. But I think it's more about aerodynamic testing of a naked bike which is giving whatever wind blast is coming through a very smooth and channeled way. I think I am not facing that much problem with the wind blast because I have a regular habit of riding the Duke 390. Speaking of the 390, there's one trying to race with me. 
Not today, Duke. Not today. I know that the official explanation for this design is something called the Sugomi or Crouching Tiger but to me this is a Decepticon from the planet Cybertron. Any moment it's ready to transform into a robot and destroy the traffic with missiles. This is a missile in itself and it just doesn't want to stop till it reaches its destination. This just unleashes your inner beast and have you noticed those sounds of the air intake? These are actually smaller compartments into the air box that gives you this type of feeling while the bike is taking so much air into it. This bike is just plain simple awesome. Wait, I think I've said that before. Well, I just want to tell that the gearbox has a lot of feedback, it's a little bit clunky, but I like it that way. I like to know that the gearbox is engaging properly. So, we are getting close to the end of this ride. That's my U-turn up ahead, and I'm really, uh, I really don't want to let go of this motorcycle so easy. So, I'll just take it slow from here and try to enjoy this bike. I really wasn't looking to test out the brakes of this motorcycle but thanks to the street stunter I ended up doing so. The dual Tokiko discs up front have a lot of bite but in cornering it was so progressive I really couldn't have asked for anything better than this. I mean those mono blocks they really give you a lot of front end feel while you're braking in the corners but while you're doing emergency braking the bike just stops you. I mean there's no lock, no drama, just a very strong braking force and this is uh, good for the pro riders because they like the sort of bite but I personally prefer a lot of progressive braking which I found in the corners but when I needed to stop that bike thing was there. I mean it's very difficult to balance this bite versus progressive versus feedback but the Kawasaki manages to do all three which is really impressive I mean I really couldn't have asked for any better in the braking department the Kawasaki C1000 takes very balanced approach to motorcycling on one side it gets spot on fuel injection system, wide grippy tires, ABS and a perfectly balanced chassis where the engine itself is a stressed member. On the other hand it rejects ride by wire, traction control and electronic suspension system. The ample torque ensures that you lose track of which gear you are in and the lowered console makes you forget the data like RPM and speedo readings while you are riding. The machine becomes part of you and you end up only enjoying the ride. I don't sell motorcycles but if you have 14 lakhs lying around somewhere and are not obsessed with fared bikes then this is the motorcycle you should take home. If you ask me about the negatives well a 10 km ride is not good enough for me to find the negatives of this bike. I would definitely like to go back to this bike and make a complete review out of it if I am given the opportunity. But if you have liked this review Give it a thumbs up, share it in Facebook and help us grow. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done already and do let me know in the comment section if you really enjoyed it or if you want to give me some feedback about how I can improve. That would be very nice. This is Rahul and I see you very very soon. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.